Hi, I'm Tim Tyler, and this is a review of this book, Promethean Fire, by Charles Lumsden and E.O. Wilson. And there's the book from all angles. I'll try and keep this brief, because this is an old book, which is largely of historical interest these days. So the book was published in 1983, and two years earlier, the pair published Genes, Mind and Culture, one of the early pioneering works on cultural evolution. This book was intended as more of a popular work, I think, and the topic is the evolution of the human mind. And the book contains multiple illustrations, autobiographical passages, and narratives concerning the lives of our distant ancestors, as well as some science. So I'm going to show you some of the pictures, um, or one of the pictures. There's this one. There we go. So on one side here, we've got the evolution of a human from a DNA molecule at the bottom up to um, a baby at the top, and then down the other side, the baby develops into an adult, and then the adult goes on to have some children. So that shows genes on one side and culture on the other side, and that's the co-evolutionary loop that Lumsden and Wilson talk about in their book. The book's not terribly well written, and it gets boring in places, so the autobiographical bits are about the sociobiological controversy and about how Lumsden and Wilson wrote their last book, and this content isn't that great. Um, and then the narratives about the lives of our distant ancestors, those also get painful. And then there's a fairly large section about aliens, and two groups of aliens are covered. One group learns everything, and the other group of aliens has entirely genetically specified behaviour. And there's some science, but it often is fairly loose, and references are relatively rare. Lumsden and Wilson define their notion of a culture and go into the idea that genes hold culture on a leash and discuss gene culture coevolution, and they complain about how difficult the whole subject is. Their theory boils down to the idea that genes predispose organisms to acquiring particular sorts of culture, and then culture in turn goes on to affect the genes. And this is fine as far as it goes. However, the book only mentions the fact that culture is transmitted once and doesn't mention the idea that it's inherited at all. And the book doesn't mention the idea that cultural evolution might resemble organic evolution, and that's really the key idea which most subsequent work in the area is based upon. Lumsden and Wilson do cite Dawkins, Cavalli Sforza, Feldman, Boyd, Richardson, Durham, and Campbell. However, their citation doesn't go far beyond listing their names, and Lumsden and Wilson don't seem to have grasped that most of these other authors had a much more significant and well-developed theory than their own. The last two chapters are the best. The penultimate one goes into the author's ideas and looks in some detail into the ways in which culture might influence genes and the ways that genes might influence culture. The last chapter proposes a unified science of humanity. Perhaps read those chapters first if you want to avoid being put off. Or perhaps skip this book unless you have a particular interest in the thinking of the authors in the area. The book probably isn't going to teach you that much that you couldn't get more easily elsewhere. So, enjoy.